as John Pierce may have told you, uh, we went to a uh, Deacon Newland concert. Did you know Deacon Newland? No. Uh, she was a pianist at a small college uh, near there, uh, pretty fair pianist, and uh, but uh, not all the stuff she played was very good. She played some Schoenberg, which was pretty good, and some Schnabel, which uh, John and I both thought was terrible. And at the intermission, we, uh, John, we sort of looked at each other. I don't know who said it. John said, the computer could do better than this. Why don't you write a program? And uh, so uh, I went away and wrote Music One, which did not do better than that, but um, which was a beginning. And um, the um, early compositions, or the er first composition, which was not by a composer, it was by a psychologist and had some psychological validity, um, but sounded absolutely terrible for uh, a lot of reasons, uh, technical reasons and musical reasons. Um, and I guess the real question which I often ask is, uh, why didn't we at that time give up and forget the whole thing? Um, so there were two reasons. Uh, one was a mathematical theorem of Claude Shannon's, um, which basically proved that uh, this kind of sound recording and playback was a completely general process in the sense that we knew that any sound that a, uh, the human ear could hear could be made this way. And as far as I know, you really cannot say that about any other musical instrument. Uh, so that was one thing. Uh, of course, uh, we later found out you have to know an awful lot in order to make interesting timbres. Um, the other thing was the encouragement of a number of very, uh, I think, uh, perceptive uh, musicians and composers. And um, the ones that um, are strongest in my mind are uh, Edgar Varese and Vladimir Yusachevsky and Milton Babbitt. And um, all of them were very, very excited and enthusiastic about the process, even though nothing that would interest them in the slightest musically had uh, come out at that uh, time. So um, and that, uh, um, plus just our own interest in doing that, led to the um, generalization of the Music One program. How did these uh, three composers hear about the work you were doing? Oh, um, um, by uh, uh, random chance, I mean, uh, uh, good luck and perhaps bad luck, I think, have enormous influences in the world. Anyhow, Varese uh, lived in a Greenwich village on Sullivan Street, and uh, this uh, psychologist that made the first computer piece also was a chess problems uh, 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 professional, really. And so he would go into um, Greenwich Village and sit in one of the cafes and either work chess problems with someone or talk about them. And Varez came into the cafe. And uh, I don't know whether Varez was interested in chess. Um, there was a, a painter who made the, uh, what was it called, the big glass, uh, a French Duchamp, Duchamp. Marshal Duchamp. Anyhow, uh, either through Duchamp or maybe directly, uh, Gutman met Varez and told him about it. And Varez actually arranged the first public concert at Cooper Union uh, back in those days. Um, and um, Varez, for some reason or another, um, trusted uh, us as scientists more than he trusted uh, musicians to um, make the uh, tape parts of his compositions. And I think that was misplaced. But anyhow, uh, he talked um, uh, me and Newman into helping him to redo the tape parts of uh, deserts. And uh, Yusuchevsky helped us a great deal in this. 
and um, made his studio available, and even more than that, made uh, Boulet RL available so that, in truth, although I would go in and meet Verez in Greenwich Village, and Louise would surface a uh, handsome dinner, and then we would set off for Columbia. The studio was on uh, 117th Street at that time. And then RL would meet us up there, and I would sit around and most of the evening um, doing what RL told me to do and uh, work on the, uh, the Verez tape. And that continued for about a year. And so uh, that was how uh, Yusuchevsky uh, got to know us, and I think he uh, uh, and Babbitt were very close at the time. What, was you, what were you doing at, at Boulin's instruction up there? Oh, um, um, making the sounds drier. Uh, you were working with the analog equipment of the Oh, yeah, studio. sure. Uh, it was all analog in those those days. Uh, uh, so uh, filtering the uh, the tape, and uh, uh, I'm not even sure we ever did anything as uh, complex as looping things. I think we did change speeds a little bit, but uh, Verez kept demanding sec, more sec, <laughs> and uh, uh, we did what we could and had a great time. He's a very pleasant man, and. Um, that started a friendship which lasted until he died, and uh, he came out frequently to the labs. But, um, and he was also a charter member of the Acoustical Society of America. So it wasn't uh, just us that he was interested in. He had a, uh, a fundamental um, uh, love for and uh, appreciation of, uh, of, of science. Um, 